And welcome again to the Study Bible Bible Study, where we study the Bible with Study Bibles. And Revelation 17, 14 tells us, And these shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall conquer them, for he is, Lord of Lords, he is. King of kings, and they who are with him are called and chosen and faithful. God bless and amen. And the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. From God, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, and consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Okay. Let's get back to our Barnabas study. Now, the date, object, and the intended reader of the epistle can only be doubtfully inferred from some statements which it contains. It was clearly written after the destruction of Jerusalem since reference, since reference is made to that event. But how long after is the matter of much dispute. The general opinion is that its date is not later than the middle of the second century that it cannot be placed earlier than some 20 or 30 years before in point of style both as respects throw both as respects thought and expression a very low a very low place must be assigned it now we know nothing certain of the region in which the author lived or where the first readers were to be found. The intention of the writer, as he himself states, was to perfect the knowledge of those to whom he wrote. Hilgenfeld, Hilgenfeld who has devoted much attention to this epistle, holds that it was written at the close of the first century by a Gentile Christian of the school of Alexandria with a view of winning back or guarding from the Judaic form of Christianity, those Christians belonging to the same class as himself, this, with the view of winning back or guarding from a Judaic form of Christianity. Interesting. Now, until the recent discovery of the Codex Sinaiticus by Tischendorf, the first four and a half chapters were known only in the ancient Latin version. The whole Greek text is now happily recovered, though it is in many places very corrupt. We have compared the readings throughout and noted the principal variations from the text represented in our version. We have also made frequent references to the text adopted by Hingenfeld in his recent edition of the Epistle in 1886. Now, the Epistle of Barnabas, chapter 1. After the salutation, the writer declares that he would communicate to his brethren something of that which he himself received. All hail, ye sons and daughters, in the name of our Lord and Jesus Christ, who loved us in peace. Just so we know, too, a lot of... Um, I don't know if it was the first century, but it could be between the first and second century. There was a lot of... I guess they would be considered Gnostic Gospels. And a lot of these Gnostic Gospels were actually fictional stories of Jesus Christ. They, I guess they romanticized him and uh, you know, elevated him and put him on adventures and missions and made like 
different series of books about him and whatnot and so forth and a lot of this stuff has been I guess regarded as true true canon documents through some different facets of religious sex but just some food for thought anyways seeing that the divine fruits of righteousness abound among you I rejoice exceedingly and above measure in your happy and honored spirits because ye have with such effect received the engrafted spiritual gift wherefore I also inward wherefore also I inwardly rejoice the more hoping to be saved because I truly perceive in you the spirit poured forth from the rich Lord of love you are greatly desired appearance has thus filled me with astonishment over you. I am therefore persuaded of this and fully convinced in my own mind that since I began to speak among you, I understand many things because the Lord hath accompanied me in the way of righteousness, the way of belief. I am also on this account bound by the strictest obligation to love you above my own soul because great are the faith and love dwelling in you while you hope for the life which he has promised. Considering this, therefore, that if I should take the trouble to communicate to you some portion of what I have myself received, it will prove to me a sufficient reward that I minister to such spirits. I have hastened briefly to write unto you in order that, along with your faith, you might have perfect knowledge. And the doctrines of the Lord then are three, the hope of life, beginning and the completion of it. For the Lord hath made known to us by the prophets both things which are past and present, giving also unto us the first fruits of the knowledge of things to come, things as we see accomplished. Now one by one we ought with greater richness of faith and elevation of spirit to draw near to him with reverence. I then, not as your teacher, but as one of yourselves, will set forth a few things by which in present circumstances you may be rendered the much more joyful. Now, chapter 2. The Jewish sacrifices are now abolished. They were abolished with the temple in 70 AD. Now, since therefore the days are evil, this also puts the book instantly after the destruction of the temples, chapter 2, huh? Now, since therefore the days are evil, Satan possesses the power of this world, we ought to give heed to ourselves and diligently inquire into the ordinances of the Lord. Now, fear and patience then are helpers of our faith, and long suffering and continence are things which fight on our side, while these remain pure in what respects the Lord, wisdom, understanding, science, and knowledge rejoice. Oh, there we go. Like a little science from the Lord, and along with them he hath revealed to us by all the prophets that he needs neither sacrifice nor burnt offering nor oblations, saying thus, What is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? I am full of burnt offerings and desire not the fat of lambs and the blood of bulls and goats when ye come to me to appear before me who had required these things at your hands dread no more my courts not though ye bring with you fine flour and incense in vain abomination unto me and unto your new moons and sabbaths i cannot endure therefore abolish these things that's an interesting one that's actually very interesting dread no more my courts Tread no more my courts, not though ye bring with you fine flower incense is a vain abomination unto me, and your new moons and sabbaths I cannot endure. He therefore he has therefore abolished these things. Well, I'm guessing a certain religious sex must if they read this book, I'm sure it would go right in the garbage after reading that, that sentence. But, therefore abolish these things, that the new law of our Lord Jesus Christ, the first fruit offerings, if you go back to read Exodus 12, and gives you a little bit of insight on, you know, Sunday, 
Sunday being the Lord's Day and why people worship on Sunday opposed to other many other reasons that are put forth. But which is which which is without the yoke of necessity. This might have been a human oblation and again he says to them that I command your fathers when they went out from the land of Egypt to offer unto me burnt offerings and sacrifices, but this rather I commanded them, I told them to do this. Let no one of you cherish any evil in his heart against his brother and love not an oath, no falsehood. Now we ought therefore, being possessed of understanding, to perceive the gracious intentions of our fathers, for he speaks to us, desirous that we, not going astray like them, should ask how we may approach him to us. Then he declares a sacrifice pleasing to God is a broken spirit, a smell of sweet savor. To the Lord is the heart that glorifieth him that made it. We ought therefore, brethren, carefully to inquire concerning our salvation, lest the wicked one, having made his entrance by deceit, should hurl us forth from our true life, our eternal life. And this puts us to chapter 3. Okay. The Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father of all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And Revelation 17, 14 tells us, And these shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall conquer them. For he is Lord of lords, he is King of kings, and they who are with him are called and chosen and faithful. God bless and amen. This is the by the study Bible Bible study where we study the Bible with study Bible session two of the epistle of Barnabas. Amen and God bless.